Good morning, everybody. Hopefully, you're having a wonderful day or evening or middle of the night. Whatever you're doing, welcome to my channel. My name is Bobby. I'm your buddy. <laughs> I'm the Emperor of the Universe, by the way. Uh, I'm still waking up. Just started drinking my coffee that I made, but I had to get this out. Yesterday was pretty amazing. I'm, I, not just yesterday, but the last couple days, I've actually stuck my neck out and started selling my art. Cause, you know, you have to engage. You, once you put up your sign, people can engage you, regardless, right? But that's a good thing. I've had three encounters, and all three encounters were very positive interactions. And the last one was a gentleman that came over. It was yesterday. This was after I was done selling, and I pulled out my art up. He was taking pictures, an older guy, older gentleman. And we came over and we were talking for a minute. <clears throat> it started it started raining. He was like, You wanna go to dinner? I'm like, sure. He's like, I'll pay you. You know, you look like you could use a good meal, right? Sure, why not, right? So we go to dinner and we're talking and his grandsons, one of them especially, well they were both um, verbally abused very bad as children by their father to the point where they are just loud noises it's it's post-traumatic stress disorder it's shell shock that there's that the father was so aggressive yelling at these children that they they become milquetoast they become they become subservient okay just put that in mind and my father also was a yeller my father was very had anger issues and so he would yell and that affected me and I, and I understand that that's one of those things where and that was another interesting <clears throat> excuse me interesting thing that I realized when I was hanging out with my father the first time before I went into the wilds like when I came down from Washington I stopped and hung out with my dad for a minute and every time he would start talking to me and he would start getting emotional or pow, you know pissed off it's usually political or whatever and he would start getting angry and he wouldn't be angry at me but his voice, the anger in his voice would affect me. I literally was like, oh my, my, it was like, it was like an attack. It felt like an attack on my, my being when he would yell and get angry. And I, so just being in the room with my father was painful when he would get like that. And he didn't understand. He, he, I wasn't going to mention it. I wasn't going to sit there and say that to my dad. I wasn't going to sit there and say like, you know what I mean? I wasn't going to bring it up because he's already going through enough. And I don't want him to have to feel, deal with that kind of guilt, right? So trust me I'm so I'm just sitting there and it was painful I couldn't wait to get out of there I couldn't wait to leave my father's and I love my father but I couldn't wait to get out of there because of that his voice from my childhood <clears throat> and then this gentleman was telling me about his grandsons and how he's dealing with one of them right now and he's living with them and he's just really shell-shocked he's and he's go, and he's coming out he's he was addicted on meth I'm not gonna mention who these people are but basically and here's the thing and he's recovered from that which is a, and I was trying to tell him about marijuana and, and but it's almost like you you the whole idea of addicts is they don't do anything but here's a freaking thing marijuana is a, a medical miracle and if they, people would have done that in the first place they would probably wouldn't do other drugs because you wouldn't need them and there's a reason you have coffee go grows from the ground that's an upper that'll get you going in the day and then you have weed that can bring you kick your butt that back in the dirt at night when you want to go to sleep those are two natural things that grow out of the ground no chemicals you know no factories needed but I you know but I just thought about that guy and I was like and anyway the, the gentleman was awesome and he bought one of my paintings and the interesting thing was he bought the one painting that that in my gallery that I in my last video the the three daisies he bought it and I didn't, I, I didn't even think about it until he he bought it he's like I want this one and he's gonna give it to his granddaughter and I realized that and I told him I was like I actually said out loud that I want to sell you today because she was getting ragged man that poor thing was getting a little afraid on the corners because it was just the wear and I'm like at some point I wouldn't be able to sell it so that was a blessing and 50 bucks from one of my paintings that was awesome so that was a good day but I also talked about his, his grandson I was like maybe he's empathic too because just being around other people is painful for a lot of things and a lot of reasons and I guess he was telling me how his grandson was working at Walmart I think and one of the managers was yelling at another employee, not even at him. 
but that yell in that in the tone and the way that the manager and they're assholes at Walmart and trust me I worked there so anyway so he yelled at somebody and this and his grandson was so affected by this guy yelling at somebody else that he quit so you know and he and I told him I was like your grandson obviously is tra traumatized and he probably needs a lot of alone time and just time to heal and figure it out and, and it's like you can't addiction you know that's part of the part, addiction is addiction everybody talks about uh, you got to fight addiction no you got to fight the cause of addiction the cause of addiction is childhood trauma the cause of addiction is lack of love for oneself if you love yourself and you know heroin is shit you would never pump it into your veins ever if you know meth is crap and what it does to people and you love yourself you're never gonna fucking smoke or fucking snort that shit period so it starts with children. It starts with the behavior of children and how you treat your children and how they grow up. If you love your child every day, my, my, I love my son. He's, he can be a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. But he was loved as a child. And he's a very confident kid. A little cocky. You know what I mean? But he's, but, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But I mean, there's work to be done. He's not perfect. We all are. We all got work to do. He came into this earth to do something for him his purpose and I love him and, but yeah but that's the thing is you, your children how they are affected as children and that and that just that's it you know his his grandsons were yelled at and be they were verbally abused his their father was verbally abusive and I mean really bad to the point where they just they, they just beat him into the ground can you imagine years upon years of that kind of abuse it's just and I bet I dealt with it I know from personal experience, my father used to whoop my ass with a belt. Shit you do now, you go to jail for it. But he used to whoop my ass, and it hurt. One time I tried using a, a, a book. Put it in my pants, and he whooped my ass harder. He thought it was funny, but he still whooped my ass. I mean, and it, it, it wasn't like just picking on me. My sisters got ass whoopings, everybody. He was just, yeah, it was just discipline. That's, he was used to that from my grandmother, of all people. Uh, my my loving, I love my grandmother. The one, my grandmother, grandma, um, <laughs> my father's mother. The one I went down to Santa Cruz in Watsonville to, to see, to visit her grave. But she was whooping ass. I felt that too when I was a little kid. She'd babysit. Yeah, she'd whoop ass, but that was her job. She had a bunch of boys, and she had to maintain discipline. When Dad was off working, Grandpa, Great Grandpa was, you know, my Grandpa was off working. My Grandma was whooping ass with the boys, making sure they were straight and very disciplinarian. My father was a, very strict like that too, very, you know. But I don't hold that against him. I understand it was. I don't look at him like as an abuser. I understand he was. It was systemic of his family. That was. That's how like. They call it ancestral curses when you when you pass down bad behavior, as, as opposed to good behavior like loving and supportive and you know what I mean. And the, your whole like this guy, this guy I was talking to, he would do anything for his grandkid. You know, it's like I wish my grandparents were that involved in me when I was a kid, but that wasn't even the issue. So there's different levels of how people care and love and. Yeah, so addiction is important to fight and to understand. But and, and there's another thing, is I notice a lot of older people, they assume that everybody sleeping in their cars is a crackhead. Like everybody sleeping in their vehicles, down on the luck, is there because of their own, you know, doing. They were, and I'm like, that's not true. A lot of people are just poor, and, and this whole bullshit lockdown just screwed people out of jobs and out of apartments, and so people had to live in their vehicles. They're not all crackheads, so you have to be compassionate when you see people sleeping in their vehicles. Don't assume they're all just scumbags ready to rob you. So, just throwing that out there. Anyway, I love you. God loves you, and the universe is crazy about you. No, I hope this video turns out. Have a wonderful day.